The youth of South Africa command billions of rand in spending power directly and through their influence over household consumer decisions. According to research analysis conducted by Yellowwood, today's young adults have more disposable income than the generations that have come before them. While marketers want to draw in the under-23s, they need to be aware that this is a heterogeneous group with mercurial tastes. Well, to discuss, I have with me David Blight, CEO of Yellowwood. Hello and welcome. Great Nothing to have you with us. Thank you. Very interesting title of your research analysis, A Youth Lost in Translation. Does that talk directly to the findings? It does, definitely. I think the, the reason we used that title was it, it's very clear that older generations and younger generations are missing each other in respect to, I guess, how we how we perceive uh, the the motivations of the youth why they do certain things that they do why they act and behave in certain ways and 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 perhaps how they uh, consume goods and services very important for us to understand that as uh, marketers um, but also how how they will change our society in the future just mm -hmm. because of 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 their mindsets and and where they as individuals are different um, or how they are different. Obviously this affects goods and services that are being offered in the market because you'd want to tap into the special market. Absolutely. I mean, they are the economy of the future, without mm -hmm. a doubt. Tell us uh, about the study itself, the population that you tapped into, the demographic scope of the survey. Sure. So we worked with uh, a sister company of ours called HTI Youth Marketers. They run an annual survey called um, Generation X. Uh, there are uh, five and a half thousand interviews um, that they conduct on a national level, um, fully representative of the, the population uh, demographic and, and um, urban and peri-urban, um, focused urban and peri-urban. And they're a, um, uh, they're a specialist youth marketing company, but we worked with them because they have real access to conversations with individuals mm -hmm. besides the survey data itself. Um, they run a, a youth board so individuals who consult with them on a monthly basis around issues, how they feel about uh, you know, their parents, how they feel about their school environment, how they feel about brands, how they feel about the future of the country. Mm -hmm. So some really deep issues um, which they dig into beyond the, 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 the pure data to understand and appreciate uh, the youth market mm -hmm. or as a market. And all of that is necessary to really understand the youth spending patterns. Uh, in terms of how they feel about the country, the political situation, all of that. Absolutely, because it affects their motivations and it affects their, uh, you know, the conversations they have with each other and it affects their impression of what they think is a good brand or not a good brand mm -hmm. or who's doing good in my community or not doing good in my community or which brands understand me or don't understand me. And they're very, very quick to, to identify where a brand is perhaps uh, talking down to them, um, you know, arriving in a social media environment with a sense of arrogance, mm -hmm. um, talking about themselves as a brand, not about, you know, uh, the conversation itself. So, they, you know, there are some real lessons we've learned from how marketing and particularly brands inside marketing needs, needs to, you know, adapt itself um, to be more relevant to, to this to this um, youth market. Sounds very interesting, fascinating. It's fascinating, and we're missing each other a lot. Mm. You know, older generations and younger generations are are missing each other. Um, there are a lot of preconceptions about the youth market that naturally, uh, I guess, generations that preceded the current uh, youth generation. Um, there are a lot of generalizations and a lot mm. of assumptions that we make. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. What would you say are the key findings from a marketing strategy perspective? Yeah. Well, the main key findings yeah, of this analysis. I'll, yeah. I'll give you a few examples of the assumptions that we make and, 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 and how that informed the, the, the findings or the recommendations we make mm -hmm. to marketers and branding people. Firstly, it's very clear that um, previous generations almost label the youth as, as born freeze, right? And this is a misnomer, we think, because from the research data, what's very clear is that the youth are becoming more and more anxious, actually. 
And a lot of that stems from uh, their anxiety about their safety and security in, in our, our, our current um, mm -hmm. economic environment. Can they get a job in the future? Crime that's all around us. And there is an increase in anxiety around that. The bigger thing and one of the most scary uh, um, pieces of feedback we had was from um, a, a young person who said they feel increment, increased pressure um, year to year, even as they're getting slightly older, but they're, st they're, they're still young, from their, their, the pressure that they feel to, 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 to be a return on investment to their parents. And because mm -hmm. many of the youth of today have got I guess an older generation or par you know, sets of parents who come from less than um, what the youth are able to earn or, mm. or achieve today because um, the, the, you know, they have more possibilities or opportunities, that the pressure placed on them to mm -hmm. succeed is immense. And we're putting too much pressure on the youth to, to, to deliver and they're feeling like uh, that's affecting their, their, their ability to, to, to be individual and to actually get on with their own lives. Mm -hmm. Needing to please their parents to be in a particular career path rather than actually doing something that they love. And these are tough economic times as well. They're tough economic times and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it almost becomes, um, you know, they take on that mantle as the youth, as a big responsibility mm -hmm. to actually be the economic breadwinner um, for Uh, a family. Um, What are some the of the, the perspectives that, that came through from the youth around education? Because obviously education would play a big role in preparing them um, to take on jobs, to take on these responsibilities that you just mentioned. Definitely. A lot of pushback in that area, actually. A lot of feedback that the nature of the education system at a school level is just not working for them. And it's too vertical. Uh, whereas because the youth have abundant access to more knowledge than we have had in, in, in our generation, mm -hmm. that they actually know a lot more than, than we think they do when they arrive at a workplace for the first time. Mm -hmm. But workplaces as corporations are structured generally in a very vertical way. So very hierarchical, very vertical, and you have to listen and be told. But the youth of today operate in a much more horizontal way. Mm -hmm. So learn from each other and learn from other sources that are freely available on the internet, um, that are freely available through social media conversation, and therefore arrive with uh, a lot more knowledge um, than we give them credit for. Yeah. And that creates a bit of a tension, I think, internally within organizations. And I think that's why you see globally there's quite a strong trend towards this idea of, of um, readiness for the workplace. Are individuals, young people, ready to enter the workplace? Mm -hmm. But I think on the counter to that is is the workplace ready to take on people who are arriving with a sense of anything's possible a sense of kind of lateral thinking a sense of change um, and most workplaces aren't ready for that and i think also in that context the question is are we seeing the youth of today being more entrepreneurial definitely by nature definitely than the previous generations given all these challenges because that those challenges i would assume would serve as a catalyst for 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 entrepreneurs entrepreneurial development without a doubt uh, i think the um, i mean let's take for example uh, a, a preconceived idea that that individuals who are young uh, just because they're always on their phones um, are disconnected from society Yeah. And or they, they, there's a lot of gaming that goes on, right? So mm -hmm. 78% of young males under, under 23 um, game two to three times a, a week, right? There's an assumption that, that that's, you know, there's a bit of laziness involved, there's a bit of kind of meat, it's all about me and individualistic. Um, whereas actually what's happening in, you know, it's almost like the first language, their first language as youth rather than as something that they're doing that's, that's uh, some, something an older generation wouldn't approve of. Mm -hmm. That the learning from that, their ability to organize, their ability to, you know, go for outcomes because of the games that they play. Maybe show leadership. Their ability to show leadership, their mm -hmm. ability to think differently, their ability to be lateral, actually is quite useful 
in an innovation environment inside a workplace mm-hmm. because they will think about problems in different ways. In terms creative of creative solution yes. making, yes. In terms of how some of the, uh, the youth actually answer some of the questions, because I had the opportunity to go through this yes. analysis. Uh, that, that's the first thing I picked up from their responses that they were quite innovative. They were deep thinking, and the, the leadership qualities came out in in a lot of the answers to some of the questions. That w- that was very interesting for me. How are you, yes. how do you intend to use this information, or how should this information be used from a marketing perspective to ensure brand penetration, to really understand the importance and the strategy that should go in into place when trying yeah. to access this very important market. Yeah, I think we need to be very careful. Um, we shouldn't see it as a target market. Um, definitely there are, there are individuals with significant spending power. So the mm-hmm. direct spend of, of individuals in that, in that under 23 bracket is 121 billion a year. Mm-hmm. And that's incredibly significant. That's just direct that's money that they've either got as pocket money or saved themselves or worked for if they are over the age of 18, um, between 18 and 23. But um, we need to be careful about pushing ourselves in a traditional marketing sense mm-hmm. to the youth. Their, their feedback is, is be yourself and be you, be authentic. Don't just rock up on you know, social media websites and start pushing yourselves as a, you know, through a banner ad or a, a mm. you know, a, a piece of communication in my, it's my world. I think we've passed that it. age of marketing gimmicks. Exactly. It's we've my world. We've gone beyond that. Brands need to actually open up to the community directly they wish to tap into and speak yes. to them about their issues and appeal to them on a very authentic level. Exactly. Well, that's my take on it. To be in the conversation yep. in a real way and not in a, uh, hi, I've just arrived and um, by the way, I'm trying to sell you something. So the youth are acutely aware of that and they will diss you completely if you even, even try that kind of method. It's, it's uh, important that you listen as a brand much more than, than necessarily you know, talk about yourself. Mm-hmm. Rather listen more and, and the young people appreciate that a lot. Obviously, yes, be authentic. Um, never talk down. I mean, a lot of brands mistakenly think that if they, if they talk up their attributes what we're really good at, our key strengths, to you, the youth market, that that will be a selling point. And it actually works in a counterintuitive way because mm-hmm. the more pushy you are, the more they feel that you're not listening to them, you're just talking about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That applies to me as well. Thank you so much for that fascinating discussion. A pleasure. Always appreciate your time. Pleasure.